Pip Pip, good boy, you fancy a snog in the loo? Oi, don't be a burk, me's only joshing. You don't have to go to uni to recognize this old ornament. They calls it the spirit of ecstasy, they does. This fit burg is the queen's knickers, the fancy pants, and dependability it is. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Rolls Royce. In 1904, engineer Henry Royce met businessman slash car enthusiast Charles Rolls in a quaint Manchester hotel for a spot of tea and to powwow about Rolls Royce's first car. The Royce 10 was powered by a two cylinder gasoline engine with, you guessed it, 10 very British ponies under the hood. I think they call them Shetlands. Driving was more of a hobby for the rich than an actual mode of transportation, but Royce's cars were nothing like their competition. That's because they were built under his strict code, just like the Night's Watch. Strive for perfection in everything you do. Take the best that exists and make it better. When it does not exist, design it. Accept nothing nearly right or good enough. Sick. <laughs> Charles Rolls was a cylinder snob who preferred four or six cylinder cars, but he couldn't believe how remarkably smooth and quiet Royce's cars were. Rolls set aside his boar whore ways and told Royce, if you build them, then I'll sell them. And thus Rolls Royce was born. In 1906, Rolls Royce debutted their first major car design named the 40. 50, because that was the car's taxable hearse purse. The seven liter six cylinder engine was way ahead of its time, relying on pressurized engine lubrication, dual ignition and advanced carburation to give the car both a flexible and smooth power delivery. We're talking Kenny G Smith. Mm. Oh, yeah. The car was released in 1907, and to prove how reliable it was, Claude Johnson, the commercial and managing director of Rolls-Royce, ordered one of the cars to be built with silver-plated fittings. It was nicknamed Silver Ghost. The Silver Ghost was driven 15,000 miles and never broke down. Even the people at Mercedes-Benz were like, Socle bleu. Because it was so unbelievable, they forgot what holy crap was in German. The 4050 became the pinnacle of automotive reliability. Wealthy people from all over the world lined up to pay the whopping unheard of $4,000 for the car. In today's money, to be fair, that's like 105 grand. And that was just for the rolling chassis. You then had to take the car to a coach builder and drop another 50 to 100 grand on the doors, seats, and body panels. But these rich bastards, they didn't care. And as Henry Royce used to say, the quality will remain long after the price is forgotten. In 1913, the 4050 finished the grueling 1820 mile rally known as Alpenfart. Alpenfart? Alpen Fiat. And by 1914, even the British military was buying them because they were literally <laughs> built like tanks. After being crowned the king of reliability, Rolls-Royce set their sights on becoming the king of power and speed. In the late 1920s, they designed their legendary R engine. It was originally made for air racing purposes. It's tough shoving a 37 liter V12, 28 hertz per engine under the hood of a car, but in a plane, the R engine helped the submarine S.6B prop plane become the fastest machine on earth when it flew 407.5 miles per earth. That's jet propulsion speed. Also, why name a plane which is awesome after a submarine which is less awesome, but also equally as awesome because the water is just like the sky for underground. Car enthusiast Sir Malcolm Campbell took notice of the airplane's achievement and was like, maybe I can shove that Rolls Royce engine in a car. So then he did it and he named the car Bluebird. And in 1935, it became the first car to go over 300 miles per freaking hour in 1935. On first gear, uh, Bluebird's capable of uh, doing 110 miles an hour. And on second gear, 
Uh, she can do just over 205 miles an hour. That's faster than any modern Ferrari, McLaren, or even a Koenigsegg. What the hell have we been doing for the last 80 years? Colby, put up a picture of this thing. Look at it. It's almost 100 years old. It went over 300 miles per. Did it even have seat belts? Probably not. With Rolls Royce powering the fastest thing on land and in the air, all that was left was to conquer the sea. And in 1938, they completed the trifecta by setting the water speed record of 103.91 miles per in a hydroplaning powerboat named the Bluebird K3. Because I guess they ran out of names. After Rolls Royce had proven it could build the most reliable and most powerful engines, they set their sights on building the most luxurious cars. The only problem with that was up until this point, they had only made engines and chassis. They didn't make the bodies. So in the late 1930s, they started bringing luxury coachworks companies like Park Ward Limited in-house. The infamous Rolls-Royce Wraith was a thing of beauty, just like Big Bro, but was still being produced by several different coach builders. In 1949, the Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn became the first model to be offered with an actual Rolls-Royce bod honor. It was a thing of elegance and beauty, and its inline six could get up to 95 four miles an hour. The Silver Dawn was followed by the Silver Cloud in 1955 and marked the beginning of a consistent aesthetic design, which included the giant Parthenon grille and the spirit of ecstasy hood ornament. With body manufacturing sorted out, Rolls-Royce started adding opulent and luxurious components to their cars. Things like electric razors and cigar humidors. Rolls-Royce, which once was synonymous with reliability and power, was now thought of primarily as the fanciest vehicle on the road. And anything associated with the car was also considered fancy, be it celebrity, a business person, or this yummy, yummy two brown mustard. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Très chic. From 1955 through the 70s, Rolls-Royce made bespoke versions of their exclusive cars with relatively few aesthetic changes. Why? Because Rolls-Royce is its own aesthetic, but by the 1980s, failing global markets and shrinking sales turned the once great automaker into a tragic tale. Rolls-Royce was sold and split and resold and resplit over the next two decades. Nobody really knew what to do with the brand. If you're only selling to a few people, how do you stay afloat? <laughs> Finally, in 1998, BMW took over Rolls-Royce minus the spirit of ecstasy mascot. They could only borrow that, which they did for $40 million. And in 2003, Rolls-Royce opened its brand new Goodwood plant in Sussex, England and totally redeemed itself. The new Rolls-Royce was like, if you want to buy like a kind of fancy car, you go buy a Cadillac, a Lexus, a Mercedes. But if you want to drop a deuce in the executive bathroom, you can buy a Rolls. In 2003, they demonstrated a recommitment to giving their cars more power. More power, baby! They launched the ultra-luxurious Rolls-Royce Phantom 7 in 2003. The car was a marvel of modern engineering, just like George Lucas's Phantom Menace. That's like the best Star Wars movie. The Phantom 7 was a game changer for Rolls Royce with its 6.8 liter V12 engine launching the nearly three ton vehicle from zero to 60 in under six seconds. But it was the highly customizable aspects of the car that made it stand out. It marked a merging of Rolls Royce's we make the greatest luxury cars in the world pedigree with their we make the most powerful kick-ass engines origins. Rolls Royce realized that their exclusive clients want exclusive cars because nothing's worse than spending a half a million bucks on a car and then seeing a dozen of the same exact car in a parking lot. Believe me, I should know. So Rolls was like, we're gonna offer our customers 44,000 paint hands to choose from. 
For the upholstery, the standard leather comes exclusively from cemental bowls raised in moist regions with rich grasses to graze on so their hides don't dry out. And the interior team doesn't limit the color to a measly 44,000 hues, okay? They will let you pick any color you want, even made up colors like James Pumpernickel Brown. And if you don't like bull hide, you can choose from lots of other materials like ostrich, alligator, even rodent celts. For trim pieces, there are hundreds of wood and synthetic trims to choose from. If you want something super Omega Toblerone fancy, you can have literal diamonds inlaid into the trim. Sure, you can choose the color of your $700 door umbrellas, and of course, the spirit of ecstasy comes in your choice of metals or illuminated crystal, but while opulent, all of these customizable features don't really change the car. In 2014, Rolls-Royce decided to show the world it could make cars that could handle too, and they unveiled the reimagined Wraith. This entry level roll starts at just 317 grand and squeezes 624 horsepower from its V12. It's purposefully lighter and more nimble. Yes, it's an enormous Rolls Royce, but it's more compact wheelbase and sportier suspension mean you're gonna wanna take it to the canyons instead of your chauffeur. In 2017, Rolls unveiled the most expensive new car in the history of new cars up until this year, the Rolls-Royce Sweptail. They used the privately commissioned $13 million car as a conceptual launching point for the newest bespoke option known as Coach Build. Their Coach Build service offers customers who are unrestrained by time or money the opportunity to design and build their own custom rolls. The ever-present Phantom now makes 563 horsepower from a twin-turbo V12. The Ghost 2 is soldiering on and feels as classically new as it did when it came out. The Wraith is still kicking through corners and it's been joined by its convertible cousin, the Dawn. Nice name nicer looks. They also have the all black, black badge edition wraith that makes 40 more hers purrs for you guys with f you money and tattoos. Oh, <laughs> they even have an SUV now. The larger Cullinan SUV is everything Rolls-Royce has ever been and more. It's named after the largest diamond ever found. And before you get upset that it's not named after a ghost like the other ones, the diamond is named after Thomas Cullinan and he's dead. The Cullinan is unique amongst Rolls's because of its rear lift gate and all wheel drive. The new Ghost isn't out yet, but even in its camo coverings, it looks leaner and more aggressive than its earlier brethren, and that's saying a lot. Rolls Royces aren't for everybody, that's clear. But even if you're cruising in some other $500,000 car, if one pulls up next to you, you'll feel that stain of envy, wishing you were driving that Rolls. Thanks for watching Donut Media. If you guys didn't watch it, we wouldn't get to make it. If you like this video, make sure you let us know by hitting that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any videos in the future. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse where Nolan outruns the cops. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut on Instagram at Donut Media. I love you.